schools and churches and synagogues and mosques, uh, in organizations, in clubs, and so on. So that's an important place for learning for women too. And then there's learning in social movement. These are uh, Filipino America, okay? That's why I told you I'm a post-colonial. I have my positionality, I have my biases. I bring out uh, cases of Filipino Americans here. So you can also learn in social movements, okay? These are again, this is uh, in the Philippines. So you can learn, there are three areas of education. Formal is the classroom. Non-formal will be short courses, certificate courses, uh, seminars, uh, conferences, and then informal would be you learn at home, you learn while you're dealing with your girlfriend, boyfriend, or whatever, with your friends, and learning in social movement. The two major authors are Finger and Holtz. And Holtz was Dr. Horace student too. So, touch him and you'll touch a lot of adult education in your life. Okay, so the two sets of theories. This is uh, what uh, Dr. Lisa Bongard said. The uncritical theory will be the basic theories that we learn. Like, I'm sure you just heard, right, today maybe, behavioralism. You heard that today? Okay, what else? Uh, humanism. Okay, what else? Cognitivism, constructivism, and constructivism. Okay, so most of the theories that we learn in general are not critical. Did you say, okay, if people behave in a certain way, you give them carrot or stick, they will behave in a certain way, like dogs. Okay, you give them food, or you, you do something, they'll do something. Pavlovian. But then in critical theory, they'd say, no. That's not enough, we're human beings, and each one is different. Then we have to look at so many different things. In uncritical theory, we say, oh, everything should be treated the same. Uh, we should not be biased, we should be objective. And critical theory, we say, hell no. We are being biased and partisan, and what's wrong with that? I am pro-women. Any problem with that? That's what the critical theory people would say. Yeah, I want to measure and see how women are treated. But I'm biased too. I won't say, okay, clinically I don't care. So I do care and I want to bring about changes. That's the critical theory side. Okay, for Marxist uh, critical theory, post colonialism, postmodernism, also known as POMO, and taking sides. Now, so getting over with all of the formalities. So what are the findings? Okay, uh, two ways of looking at things. The first is ideology, and we'll look at what are the different ideologies and how does that affect the way by which we view women. Okay, the second would be the different historical moments. Okay, so ideology, okay? So how do we think? Again, we are not just objective in one way of looking at things, okay? Uh, looking at one thing would lead to different interpretation. Do you know, I'm sure you know, that now it's Ramadan. What's Ramadan? Holy uh, ones. Fasting. Islam. It's, it's the Islam thing. Okay. What, yeah. Getting there. It's the month of fasting. Yeah. Yeah, it's the month of fasting starting. That's the problem. In the calendar, on the calendar, they say, it's Monday, but it depends on the imam. What's an imam? Priest. Yeah, it's like the priest. I mean, using the Catholic vocabulary. Okay? It's like the priest would say, no, 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 no. I have to go out and see if the womb is up there at this certain time and this certain angle. So the Dekalb imam said, no, we'll start Wednesday, which is today. But then the Rockford imam said, no, 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 no. I looked out. The calendar says Monday, it starts Tuesday. You see, it's the same Islam, the same Ramadan, but different interpretation of when it starts. If you look at your friends in Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei, they're debating, oh, we start our iftar today, we start our Ramadan today. And because it depends on what their imam tells them. 
I said, but can't you look at the calendar? They, they know where the moon is for thousands of years. No, 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 the Imam has to go and see. So this is by way of parallelism, looking at how do we look at the world. It depends. Uh, what you see depends on where you sit. That's what my professor in France told me. Oh, that's a deep saying. It means if you are elite, you have one way of looking at things. If you are a man, you have one way of looking at things. If you're elite, male, white, you have another way of looking at things. So each one has a different way of looking at things. Okay, reactionary means you very, uh, maybe violently, but very aggressively don't want change. You want to turn the clock back. For instance, uh, let me give since we're to the Catholic priest. Okay, the Vatican II says, do you know, this is for the Catholic practice, not for the Protestant and so on. Uh, before the 1960s, the priests were all facing the altar and praying, so you don't see the priest's face. And there's incense burning, many of you weren't born yet. It was like in heaven, it's like burning incense, like you are inhaling grass, you know, it was so good. And then they were praying in Latin. <laughs> so they were praying in Latin, you don't know what's going on, like, oh, this is heavenly. But then, when it came to 1965 or so, Pope Paul VI, at the Vatican II Council, no, 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 forget Latin, people don't know what's going on. And why should the priest not face the people? Let's do a turnaround. So the priest now faces the people. And before 1960s, women had to wear skirts long and have to have, have to wear veil. 1965 or so, after the Vatican Council, forget about it. Women can wear blue jeans, veil. It's optional. So times have changed. But guess what? There are reactionary priests. Like in the Philippines, there's one church, he would say, no, you women, in the middle of the mass, he would say, you women, shame on you, why are you wearing blue jeans? Next week you should come and wear a long skirt. And you, why aren't you in prayer? Like, okay, aren't they here to, for their soul to be saved? They don't need your shouting and cursing at them. But the priest does that. And it's the only church that does that. And if you don't want, better not come or else you'll be in public shame. So that's kind of reactionary, wanting to turn back to the club. Although the Vatican Council already said, do as you wish. So then the Amish would be a pretty Well, Amish is by themselves, if you compare maybe to another, but themselves to themselves, they just say we, we freeze time. We want the way things as they are. And we don't want to deal with electricity, except if we need to use phone, and it has to be outside. Okay. But in relation to themselves, they just want to keep their tradition. That will be more the next conservative. They don't want change. But if they have to, like the telephone, like there'll be a group of 50 Japanese who do, will go to Shipshawana or to the Amish community in near Springfield or in Pennsylvania. They need to have telephone conversation. So okay, as long as the phone is not inside the house, it's okay. okay. And then, so that's conservative, like they don't want to change, but if they have to, they will, but real slowly, okay? From the root word to conserve, you want to keep things as they are, to keep the status quo. And there's a new phenomenon called post-feminism. They say, oh, women are already equal. What's your problem? That's not even talk of feminism. This is now post-fem. Like people are saying, it's post-racial. Well, I heard this from the NIU undergrad students. Uh, my jaw just dropped the, un the undergrad students say, no, it's post-racial. We were uh, black African-American president. Everything's okay with equal. Like, are you serious? Yeah, they were the freshman undergrad students. Okay, and then libertarian feminists would say, <coughs> I want to be in control of myself and do whatever I want as long as I don't hurt another person. If I want to go, okay, let's think of southern France. You want to go to Nice, Côte d'Azur, Saint-Tropez, in Monaco. You can go, uh, even in Paris, at the banks of the Seine. You can go topless, nobody would care. It's uh, even in Germany and even in Strasbourg between France and Germany. 
it's a park, I want to go topless, I'm not hurting you, am I? You don't want to look, then don't. That's your problem if you don't want to look. Okay, that's, that's already the liberty. But there are two uh, interpretations to our feminism. One is very anti, uh, what do you call this? I forgot the correct word. Uh, using the woman's body as a commodity, as a tool for exploitation. That's one perspective. The other is, no, no, I'm not being exploited. I want to be prostituted. That's why you have in, uh, in the Netherlands, prostitution is legal. Okay, there's a street in Chinatown along the river, and it's red, light, literally red lights. Okay? And they say, it's my choice. Okay? Except if there's a syndicate, then that's not their choice. They were forced to do it. So there's already a divide between the commodification of the body, the use of bodies and object by male, and it's male domination. The other is no, it's my choice. I want to do that. Okay. Now there's the liberal one that says, okay, um, we don't want to just think of ourselves as women. We want to think of the benefit of other women in society as well. Therefore, those who have more in life, have more in life should help those who have less in life. That's why we need to have health care, we need to have uh, social service, we need to have uh, breakfast for the children who can't afford it, who have to have school bus, and so on. So we're not here for ourselves, we're here to help one another. Okay, so that's an equalizing factor. So we have to help other women as well, not just ourselves. And then the so-called radical, it's from the root word radix, which means group. Okay, looking at the root causes of the problem. There are many uh, perspectives. One is social democratic. It's almost, it's uh, Western Europe and before the turn to neoliberalism, which means maybe half of your salary goes to tax, but then they all come back to you as services. Uh, public transport system, and doctors are just like regular workers. You just go there and you get, you just pay cheaply. It's just like any other service. Okay, and like here, it's really expensive. You need to have very high, uh, you have to have insurance coverage of different types. So you get your medical service. You want to see dentists. So there's a lot of free services which come from your tax money anyway. So it's like what is called as it's Edward Bernstein model or Karl Kautsky. It's the evolutionary road to socialism. So it's more on the role of the state is very important. Okay, it's Western Europe and before you know, the turn towards neoliberalism and not before Thatcherism. Uh, you have Mitterrand in France, and socialist government in Scandinavia, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, in, uh, Netherlands, Spain. And then you have the critical perspective. Critical perspective came is a Western European capitalist country version of revolutionary Marxism. So revolutionary Marxists were the people like who? Some names. Revolutionary Lenin, Marxists. Trotsky. Trotsky. Trotsky, yeah. Lenin. Leon Trotsky. Mao. Che Guevara, Mao. <laughs> we have rebels in this room, don't we? Okay. Pol Pot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Pol Pot. Okay, so the revolutionary Marxists are saying women's role is in the social revolution. You cannot separate the women's question from the revolutionary question. Lenin has a, in fact, book, it's titled On the Women's Question. It's a compilation of his speeches. Uh, say women should have daycare, should, women should be equal, should have the same uh, salary, equal pay for equal work. <clears throat> so whether you are communist or not is one thing, but he had very advanced ideas of women's equality. That's why during the Cold War, what was the Cold War? <laughs> it's not hot, okay. So what was it? Uh, Cold War is more of it's, uh, it's more of a talk and like why we're doing politics. Yeah. And, uh, between countries, hostility. Yeah. So it's more verbal instead of the actual armed hostilities between US. US and Russia. US and the former USSR. 
In those days, women's rights were very far ahead than women's.